How's it going guys? A Dragon Star Production here, back with another What If video, and this time it's going to be another part of the collab with Sacred Saiyan, that being What If the Z Fighters Learn Fusion Part 4, and, or, we can just call it the GT Edition. And, if you guys like what you're watching, remember to like and subscribe, it only takes a second, and if you want to have your What If covered in the Discord, just make sure you go join it, grind for rolls, or you can just join the Patreon. Enough talking about that, however, let's get into the video intro. So since GT takes place after the end of Z, that would actually take place as normal, as well as the Black Star Dragon Ball Saga because, well, there's not really going to be much changes or much need for fusion there, plus Goku can't really fuse with anybody there, Trunks can't fuse with Pan, Pan can't fuse with Trunks, so in that case, that's not going to change at all. However, the next arc, Fusion, does play a much bigger role, now entering the Baby Saga. The beginning does start off the same, in fact, all the way to the Goten and Gohan being affected by Baby. This is when Vegeta actually comes in, but being forced to actually combat a Super Saiyan 2 Gohan and a Super Saiyan 2 Goten. Vegeta is struggling quite a bit against the Super Saiyan 2, especially because they're possessed by Baby, so they're not holding back any punches. Goten then would nail Vegeta in the gut as Gohan kicks Vegeta straight to the ground. Vegeta though refuses to give up, but Gohan and Goten have a plan to sure enough take down Vegeta. The two baby controlled brothers perform a fusion dance, leaving Vegeta severely outmatched as Gohanten, which I'm spelling it G-O-H-T-E-N, was extremely powerful so easily he was able to cut Vegeta and baby took his new host, the Prince of All Saiyans, Vegeta the Fourth. This would then lead us to Goku and Pan, and now a also possessed Trunks arriving on the battlefield after giving the Dragon Balls to Dende like they do in canon. Goku goes Super Saiyan 3 but can't hold the form so he has to settle for Super Saiyan as then he would charge in like he does in canon, fights against Baby, loses, and then gets saved by, well, Supreme Kai, leaving Baby to actually wish for his home planet back and does the exact same thing as he would in canon. However, I'm going to skip to the next change, and this is actually going to be when Supreme Kai gets the Divine Sacred Water to actually heal and fix everyone from being under Baby's possession. Goku now isn't left fighting alone because he has Gohan, Goten, and Trunks, and even Pan managing to help fight in this big battle against Baby. Baby though was much stronger than the Saiyans at this point, but Goten and Trunks decide to fuse together, instantly powering up to Super Saiyan 2 and rushing Baby. Gotenks proves to have a small speed advantage over baby Vegeta, but not enough power to actually finish the fight. They realize that they could actually get the sacred water, asking, well, he starts screaming at Pan to actually get it for them. But as soon as Pan goes to get it, the water, Goku actually begins to transform into an Azaru, but not just any Azaru, the golden Azaru. This then knocks the water out of Pan's hand as she then gets hit to the ground. Goten then retreats from baby Vegeta to help Pan, which leads to Goku actually controlling the form and going Super Saiyan 4 like he does in canon. And when Goku goes Super Saiyan 4, the rest of the arc is actually going to play out per normal. Which brings us into the next arc, that being the Super 17 arc. And for the most part, I'm not really going to cover this because it plays out the same, but one thing to mention is that Goten and Trunks have a bigger role when they fuse to actually help and save 18 and Krillin in this fight. Gotenks fighting here actually gives 18 and Krillin a chance to escape, however Krillin still has some words for Android 17 so he screams at him, however 17 doesn't want to hear these words as he actually is possessed by Dr. Mu and Jiro, as he then goes for a blast on Krillin but Gotenks actually saves him by shooting a galactic donut and this actually wrapping around 17, blocking the attack from even being shot. 18 then grabs Krillin as 18 has a plan to actually get her brother back. In the meantime, Gotenks was holding his own until 17 burst into the air, fusing with the hell counterpart, creating Super 17. Gotenks then attempts to hold off Super 17, but ultimately they get clapped after the fusion wears off. And in fact, 17 had a beam that heads strictly towards Trunks, and the beam would actually be pretty fatal, but Goku saves the day, leaving yet another arc basically to play out the same, as the biggest change here would have been Goku even being involved and Krillin not dying, so I felt it was worth mentioning here. Now we enter the last and final arc of Dragon Ball GT, the Shadow Dragon Saga. This arc, unlike all the others, actually changes right from the start. Instead of Guru actually being the only Dragon Radar, Trunks now actually being the president of Capsule Corp uses his mother's blueprints and actually creates a new Dragon Radar. With that said, Trunks actually gathers up Goten and Gohan to actually save the Earth from what they see as their mistakes as well. They all wished on the Dragon Balls, therefore 
they felt it was their responsibility to actually save the world as well. With that covered, the three half Saiyans actually encountered the mole dragon named Natron Shinron, I believe. Gohan, Goten, and Trunks, after encountering this mole dragon, they all see that he's digging in the ground, so they decide to use their numbers to cut him off, and this actually lets the dragon not transform, so this means it's much easier to actually get the ball from him, so they simply do this by blasting him with a triple Kamiyamiha, easily getting the seven star ball. On the other side of the earth, however, Goku and Pan were handling the first three dragons that they fought in canon, so I'm not going to cover that. So we're going to be covering the next two, that being Nova and Ice Shinron. Goku and Pan are actually the ones to find Nova Shinron, while Ice actually ambushes the three half-breeds by freezing Trunks with a single blast. Trunks being sidelined here means that Gohan and Goten did their best to actually double-team Ice. However, they both know that they have to stay guarded, realizing if the Ice hits them, they're done for. Ice then also doesn't lay off the attack either, meaning that Gohan and Goten couldn't perform the fusion dance either. That means even if they wanted to, they weren't able to. However, just because they couldn't didn't mean two others couldn't fuse because this fight carries on for quite a while. Ice, out of nowhere, gets punched several times, leaving him open for an attack as Gohan then notes that the fighter is Trunks and Majub fused, the new warrior known as Majunks. Yeah, Majunks. Has Ice actually defenseless and Ice gets swallowed up by a finish buster, giving them yet another Dragon Ball in this fight. But the celebration soon gets cut off when immense amount of negative energy plants down on the ground, this being Sen Shinron. Sin doesn't waste any time either, leaping straight into the fight as Majonks is strong but Sin is another level. Luckily, Goten is able to notice this and he gets Gohan up fusing into Gotonks. Gotonks then aids Majonks in the fight against Sin, as Sin is actually surprised that he was being pushed that much, but he knew exactly what he had to do. He had to absorb all the Dragon Balls, so Sin actually gets lucky when Nova and Super Saiyan 4 Goku actually show up. The fusions have just worn off, so that means that Sin was pretty battle damage at this point, so when Goku and Nova were actually about to go in, Sin had to think smart, and he actually used a gigantic blaze that would actually get caught all around Nova, actually giving him the Dragon Ball and the chance to actually absorb the balls before Goku could even do anything about it. This then leads to Super Saiyan 4 Goku versus the newly formed Omega Shinron. Omega was by far the strongest villain that the crew had ever fought, so Omega would grab Goku, making him look like a fool, and Vegeta, thanks to Bulma, actually comes in as a Super Saiyan 4 as he off-guards Omega Shinron with a final flash. This wasn't enough to finish off Omega, but Vegeta knew that. The final flash was strictly to give them time to perform the fusion dance, and Goku without question agrees to do it with Vegeta, and the strongest fused warrior has been brought out once again, but not any Gogeta, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. Gogeta was now flipping the script on Omega Shenron, making him look like the joke. As Omega Shenron couldn't even manage to hit Gogeta, hell, Omega Shenron couldn't even manage to block one of his attacks. And Gogeta already fusing before, they knew that their time was limited, especially if they were exerting this much power, so instead of wasting any time, they would then charge up a hundred times Big Bang Kamiyamiha that engulfs Omega Shenron. The blast was enormous, lighting up all of Earth and every surrounding planet near it. However, all of the smoke would then clear as the original Shenron, the green Shenron, would come out of the smoke, which leads us into the final episode of GT, and this I couldn't change. This was arguably probably one of the best moments of all the Dragon Ball, so if you guys haven't watched it, I recommend you do so. However, with all that said, this is actually going to be where the series ends, and I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a pleasure working with Sacred Saiyan, and if you guys want to see more between us let me know in the comments like this video and sub with the bell icon on that way you can get any alerts whenever i upload also please consider joining the discord we do a lot of fun things in there like playing games and i have an idea for survivor where you'll be competing against other people in the discord and actually have a chance to win some money or some exclusive merch as well as consider joining the patreon where you actually have an option of getting well some exclusive merch as well as actually being featured in every single video and having the chance to actually give me one of your what ifs and me make it into tuition. With that said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Big thanks to all the artists that have helped us work on this project. With that said, Dragon Star Productions is out. Congratulations, champ. You made it to the end of the video. Now, if you hit that subscription button, that thumbs up button, and that bell icon, you won't catch a dynamite.